go to google and type rathods is then you can see our website rathods is academy there you have to click on login or register in the blue color so if you have not registered yet you have to click on do not have account and fill the details so after once you have logged in click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses hi this is usham welcome to rathods is classes today in this lecture we are going to see current affairs of 28th june 2022 so let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see first topic so first topic i took from this down to earth so here title says that how a noxious aquatic weed was used to make eco friendly product and even that helps to generate employment in rural bengal so actually one important challenge that we are facing in rural areas is especially there is no proper employment and number of rural people they mainly facing some uh, challenges regarding there is no proper livelihood so because of there is no proper livelihood then what happen that will be having some negative impact on the health and as well as we can see the negative impact that is seen on the society as well so here as you all know this water hyacinth it is a one of the important invasive species of weed which is mainly seen in the water bodies and now here people they started taking out of this water hyacinth and they started preparing some eco friendly products so whenever they started generating some uh, eco eco friendly products so that will be helpful for our environment because it will be helpful for mainly one of the alternative for using of plastic so that that will be having some negative uh, that will decreases the negative impact on environment and even it is also creating employment so that what happen that will be having some positive impact on the society and even health of that so and so family so this is some introduction and this topic is important from our gs3 paper point of view and important from our environment and ecology so whenever you are studying basic static syllabus of your environment and ecology you will be coming across one word that is invasive species so this invasive species is very very important from our upsc point of view and not only in the case of this plants but also in case of animals flora fauna and even insects and microorganisms we will be having this invasive species so you should keep in mind it is not only seen in the plants but even in animals microorganisms insects we can see this invasive species so here if you see on the screen then you can see these are the products which are mainly made up of this water hyacinth and if you see this is this water hyacinth plant okay which mainly like floating on water so if we are talking about context it mainly says that recently very recently west bengal which made an outstanding example by utilizing this water hyacinth so this water hyacinth it is aquatic weed plant and here this bengal people that is especially in the rural areas they started developing of small cottage industries and that mainly helps both financially and as well as they mainly came up with this environment friendly okay environment friendly products so they came up with this environment friendly products and will also financially help their families so now let us try to see some facts regarding this water hyacinth so this water hyacinth scientific name is echinorea crassispis okay echinorea crassispis so here it is aquatic weed so this plant which is mainly seen in the water bodies across south asia even including in india so as it is an invasive species it was not native to india but we bought that species especially from south america so mainly for the decorative purpose as an ornamental aquatic plant so we got this from south Af america but later on what happened that led to increasing of uh, presence of this hyacinth and now it is like an invasive species so why we we bought that species from the south america because it will be like looking very very beautiful with purple flowers and also also having this high aesthetic value so because of this so we bought this and now it is invasive weed in water bodies in india so if you see here this image yes so you can see the purple flowers you are looking very much nice and you are very much pleasant as well and if you are talking about what are the issues regarding this water hyacinth so actually it is a simple floating aquatic plant and it is mainly seen in surface water 
especially in some rivers, riverlets and uh, streams, ponds, dams, lakes and bogs. So we can see this water hyacinth that will be grown. So there's a plant which has uh, some important thing like so here it produces a very large number of young plants or fruits. So here reproduction rate is very very fast. So that what happened it will be becoming very very difficult to control the growth of this water hyacinth. And one important problem here is if you see this is the water surface and on this water surface we can see this water hyacinth which is mainly floating. So because of this here it does not allow sunlight okay it does not allow sunlight to penetrate into this. So what happens so whatever the water plants are present inside the water they are not going to get enough sunlight so that will leads to death of this plants inside the water and even whenever these plants are uh, dying or decomposing in the water yes they will be require large amount of oxygen so BOD will be very high that is biological oxygen demand and whatever the oxygen content that is present in the water will be decreased so that whatever the aquatic animals which are present so they will be not getting enough oxygen so there will be suffocation which is mainly seen for this aquatic aquatic uh, fauna or aquatic organisms and next important one here is so whenever there is this water hyacinth which is mainly floating on this water so if you want to remove this to maintain the good quality of water so it will be like a very uh, time taking process and even expensive and labor intensive process and this water hyacinth which has become a serious problem for the plant okay problem plant for this uh, ecosystem which is present in this regions so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see next topic it is also a collector from this down to earth so title says global food crisis one new child one new child suffers malnutrition every second that is for every 60 seconds for every one minute so one new child they are mainly suffering with this uh, malnutrition so because of this global food crisis so this is the thing which mainly said by this unicef so this article is important from your gs paper to under health point of view so if you're talking about context it mainly says that since the beginning of the year so since the beginning of the year additionally 2,60,259 children or one children every 60 seconds or every one minute they are mainly suffering severe wasting wasting means low weight to height in 15 countries because of this global food crisis especially we can see this condition is a very very uh, very very high in especially in this uh, African countries so here what happened so for every one minute one new child he is facing malnutrition especially they are facing wasting so this is according to this UNICEF study so if we are talking about highlights it mainly says that the number of children who are suffering from this severe wasting it was projected to increase more than 7.9 million in June okay in June 2022 so there will be increasing of these children who are suffering from the severe wasting it will contribute to about 7.9 million from around 7.2 7.7 million in January 2022 so in January 22 the children were 7.7 .7 million and in June 2022 the study says that it is like 7.9 million so there is a very drastic increase of children who are mainly facing with this wasting and severe wasting where children are too thin to their height so to their height the weight is very very low so that here we can see they were very very thin so it is most visible and little form of undernutrition so because of there is no proper nutrition or undernutrition or malnutrition we will see the problems like wasting and as well as stunting so this severe wasting which is mainly because of lack of proper nutrition and here this severe wasting which mainly caused by lack of nutritious food and repeated bouts of diseases like diarrhea measles malaria so because of this that will lead to compromising of this child's immunity so on one side we do not have proper nutrition proper micronutrition or the macronutrition there are no proper nutrition on another side they are mainly suffering with some diseases like diarrhea diarrhea means nothing but we can say loose motions in our common terms and next one is measles and as well as malaria so these mainly leads to the compromising of this child immunity so because of this what happened there are high incidence of wasting that is mainly seen so what are the reasons the reasons here is so across the world there is increasing of food price 
So if you're talking about personally in India, yes, there is increasing of edible oil price, increasing of vegetable prices, etc. So in the same way here in the number of countries, there is increasing of price of food that is mainly seen. And even some areas which are mainly uh, facing drought, especially in this uh, African countries. Okay, in African countries, recently I saw one uh, one important uh, video regarding this uh, 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 regarding this drought actually so because of this drought the number of animals cattle are mainly dying because they are not getting food they are not getting enough water also so because of this here number of cattle they are mainly dying in this in this some areas of uh, african countries so if you are talking about uh, there is increasing of food prices because of this ongoing russia ukraine war so because of this that led to disruption in the wheat supply and next one here is drought mainly so that is seen and because of this drought we can see there will be climate change in some countries and this is mainly combined with ongoing economic impact of this COVID-19 and even we are seeing there will be some negative impact on food and as well as nutrition security worldwide. So these are reasons. So reasons here is the first one is because of soaring food prices and because of climate change because of drought and it is having some impact because of this covid 19 pandemic and if you're talking about what are the immediate actions that can be taken so immediate actions that we can take here is ready to use therapeutic food so we can go for ready to use therapeutic food so in this ready to use therapeutic food it mainly contains milk powder and peanut butter vegetable and as well as sugar and as well as vitamins Okay, so here for immediate use or immediate action, so we can use this ready to use therapeutic food. So if we're talking about some facts here, recently we came up with this annual report named Global Report on Food Crisis. So we came up with this Global Report on Food Crisis 2022 and it mainly launched by Global Network Against Food Crisis. It mainly launched by Global Network Against Food Crisis. So in this report, which mainly says that which are the main drivers of food security. So first one here is conflict. So because of the conflict, especially we can see conflict uh, that is seen in the uh, triggery region. And we can see uh, conflict in this Russia and Ukraine region. And in the number of regions, we can see there is conflict. So because of this conflict and the fighting between the two countries or so the warlike situation between the two countries, yes, that will lead to death. Okay, that will lead to death. And even that will lead to food insecurity as well. So here we are talking about wasting. So here we are going to talk about undernutrition or the food insecurity. So conflict which mainly forced about 139 million people in 24 countries or territories. They are mainly facing this acute food security. And next one is there will be also increase from 99 million in 23 countries. Uh, and as well as territories in 2020 so there is an increase from 30 99 million okay in 23 countries so if you're talking about weather extremes yes because of this weather we are also seeing a climate change drought so because of this also that led to increasing of undernutrition so here weather extremes which mainly forced over 23 million people in eight countries territories into acute food insecurity up to 15.7 million up to 15.7 million in 15 countries or territories in 2020. So what happened because of this extreme climate change? Now we are seeing there is global warming, melting of glaciers and increasing of greenhouse gas emissions. So because of all these things that have some negative impact, that mainly forced over 23 million people in eight countries or territories into acute food insecurity. And if you're talking about economic shocks, over 30 million people in 21 countries or territories they mainly suffered acute food security in 2021 it is mainly due to economic shocks and down from over 40 million people in 17 countries and territories in 2020 so here if you're talking about economic shocks over 30 million people in this 21 countries and territories they mainly suffered acute food shortage and because of this economic shocks and even that led to 40 million people in 17 countries and territories they mainly undergone this uh, malnutrition or undernutrition so we're talking about what are the suggestions so we need to have an integrated approach so we need to focus on prevention anticipation and better targeting okay we these are the three important things that is prevention anticipation and as well as better targeting 
to sustainably address the root cause. First, we need to understand the root causes of this malnutrition. For example, there is food crisis, there is poverty, there is marginalization. So, pop, uh, population growth is also one of the important factors. Apart from that, fragile food system. So, what are the root causes are there? So, we need to try to fight against that root causes. And this one is we need to prioritize small holder agriculture. Okay, so here we need to provide some greater prioritization on the small holder agriculture as a frontline humanitarian response to overcome the access constraints and as well as solution for reverting negative long term trends. And this one is we need to go for strengthening of coordinated approach. So we need to strengthen a coordinated approach that will help for especially to ensure humanitarian development and as well as peacekeeping activities. So, we're talking about this image, you can see what are the important steps that can be taken. So, first one is we need to transform our food system, especially we need to move towards uh, this water less intensive crops from this water intensive crops like rice, sugarcane, etc. And we need to focus on agriculture, food security, nutrition, food crisis, etc. And next one is we need to come up with three dimensions. Okay, three, we, that can be implemented at three levels, the central level, state level and as well as regional level. And if you are talking about goal here, the goal here is mainly for the improved coordination and integration of actions along with this HDP nexus for long lasting solution of food crisis. So we are mainly focusing on improved condition and as well as we need to come up with a long standing, long standing solution or long lasting solution for this uh, crisis. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding United Nations Conference I step towards high seas arrangement so agreement. So this article which is talking about United Nations Oceans Conference. So now let us try to talk about this topic. It is important from your environment and ecology, which mainly comes in a GS paper too. And even it is important from international relations, which mainly comes in a GS paper too. So if you see context, it mainly says that. So it is talking about United Nations Ocean Conference. So why we need to talk about oceans? If you see our planet Earth, let us see this globe. So on this globe, you can see 70 percentage of water is present, right? And we will be having five major oceans. For example, we have Pacific Ocean, we have Indian Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Arctic Ocean, and as well as Southern Ocean, that is Antarctic Ocean. So what happens? So most of the water which is present, right? But we are not taking effective step mainly to protect our waters. So here this United Nations, this United Nations Ocean Conference, which is mainly focusing on, especially we need to take some steps for protecting of our oceans. So not only this, even our sustainable development goals, which mainly talks about life under water. So we need to protect that, right? So if you see this context, which mainly says that United Nations is hoping that a conference starting Monday will bring fresh momentum for the protected, protracted efforts to find international agreement and we are focusing on protecting of world's ocean. Yes, here we are mainly focusing on protecting of our world's ocean like Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean, as well as Antarctic Ocean. So if you are talking about this uh, Pacific Ocean, we already have this great Pacific garbage patch, right? So there is a deposition of this large amount of uh, plastic which is mainly seen. So here, yes, every country, they need to participate and they need to come up with some efforts to protect our waters. So if you're talking about details, it mainly says that, so five day United Nations Ocean Conference in Lisbon, Portugal. So which mainly talks about the protection of this uh, oceans. So here this uh, conference which mainly says that there is no comprehensive legal framework which mainly covers the high seas. There is no comprehensive legal framework which mainly covers the high seas and the ocean covers some 70 percentage of this edge surface and which mainly provides food and livelihood for the billions of people. So in this oceans, so we are going to get fishes and these oceans are very very important for the transportation trade purposes. So here in this way it is mainly providing food and as well as livelihood for the billions of people. So it is our responsibility to protect them. And some activists, they mainly say that. So these are largest unregulated areas on our planet. So there is no proper regulation that is seen on this world's oceans. So oceans now they face severe threat from the global warming, 
pollution, acidification and even other problems. So these are some important problems that are mainly faced by our oceans. So this is mainly said by United Nations. And this conference which is mainly set to adopt a declaration though not binding on its signatories. Okay, so whatever the recommendations they are given, they are not binding. So this is one important principle fact. And they are mainly focusing on just implementation to facilitate the protection of this uh, conservation of oceans and their resources. So if we are talking about the treaty, this treaty is being negotiated within the framework of UNCLOS, United Nations Convention on Law of Seas. So this treaty which is mainly being negotiated based on this UNCLOS. So regarding this UNCLOS, there was one prelims question that is uh, that is appeared in 2020-22 itself. Right, so if you are talking about some facts regarding this United Nations Ocean Conference, for the first time it mainly held in year 2017 in New York. And it mainly sought for the mobilizing of action for conservation. They are mainly focused on action of conservation and sustainable use of oceans. Sustainable use of oceans, seas and as well as marine resources. So the United Nations Ocean Conference which mainly held for the first time in June 2017 in New York and it mainly focusing to mobilize action for the conservation and as well as sustainable use of ocean seas and as well as marine resources. And we are talking about this year theme that is scaling up ocean action based on science and innovation for the implementation of this goal 14. Okay, that is Sustainable Development Goal 14. So, if we are talking about what are the targets under the Sustainable Developmental Goal 14, that when it talks about life below water. So, we need to go for preventing and as well as we need to reduce marine pollution of all kinds by 2025. So, the first one here is we need to prevent and we need to reduce marine pollution. And this one is we need to sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal environment. So, we need to sustainably manage and protect marine and coastal environments to avoid significant adverse impact by 2030. Next one is we need to minimize and we need to address the impacts of uh, ocean acidification. So we need to focus on minimizing and as well as addressing the impacts of ocean acidification include enhance scientific cooperation and it mainly focusing on even to regulate overfishing and harvesting illegal, unprotected, unregulated and destructive fishing practices. So they are mainly focusing on this fishing practices. And next one is it is mainly saying that we need to conserve at least 10 percentage of coastal and marine assets by this 2020. So we need to focus on this uh, coastal and as well as marine assets or marine areas. And next one here is so we need to prohibit the forms of fishery subsidies as well. So because of this fishery subsidies it is mainly going for overfishing, exploitation. Okay, so we need to go for eliminating of the subsidies and we need to increase economic benefits to small island developing states and least developed states for the sustainable use of marine resources. So this is about this topic. And now let us try to see next topic. I took this topic from PIB. So it is mainly talking about Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog which mainly launches report regarding this India ZIG and platform economy. So recently we came up with this industrial codes, industrial worker codes. So in that one code which mainly talks about social security. There we said about this ZIG and as well as platform workers. So now once again we are going to see this topic. So this topic is very very important from your prelims and even in your mains. So if you see context, it mainly says that Niti Aayog launched a report and the title of this report is India's booming big platform and zig economy. So it is talking about India's booming zig and platform economy. So if we're talking about details, it mainly says that this report, it is a first of its kind, which mainly talks about comprehensive uh, perspectives and recommendations on this. Zig economy. So actually this uh, article or uh, this report which mainly talks about what are the problem and some data regarding the Zig workers and even it also came up with some recommendations that can be taken by the government especially to promote security of the Zig workers and as well as platform workers. So this report which mainly provides scientific methodological approach. So it mainly provides a scientific methodological approach to estimate the current size and job generation potential of the sector. 
they mainly focused on this current size and as well as job generation potential of the sector and next one is it also highlights the opportunities and challenges of this emerging sector and that mainly presents a global best practices on initiatives of this uh, social se security and as well as delinear strategies for the skill development and even job creation and at the different categories of the workers of the workers in the sector so here this report which mainly talks about scientific methodological approach and you are mainly focusing on estimating of current size and as well as job, uh, job generation potential to the sector and even it highlights opportunities and as well as challenges in the emerging sector and is also focusing on this global best practices and even social security and they are mainly focusing on skill development and even job creation so if you are talking about this study which may released by niti ayog so it mainly says that there are about 77 lakh 77 lakh people they are mainly working in the zig economy and this is data as per 2020 to 2021 so here this report says that India requires a, a framework because a lot of amount of uh, workforce which is mainly working in this gig economy. So because of this we need a framework and this framework need to balance the flexibility which mainly offered by this platform. And we need to provide social security for these workers as well. So we are talking about highlights it mainly says that. So this report which mainly broadly classifies zig workers ok. So first one here is traditional employer employee really agreement and this one is platform based workers and next one is non-platform based workers so here this report which mainly classifies the zig economy into so here traditional employer employee agreement into platform and as well as non-platform based workers so platform based workers or those workers they mainly work or based on the online software apps or digital platforms and non-platform zig workers they are generally casual wage workers and they own okay and they own account workers in the conventional sectors working part-time or full-time so here this platform which mainly says that who are this platform workers they are mainly working on some software apps or any other digital platforms they will comes under this uh, platform workers and if they are not working in this uh, digital platforms or software platforms and these zig workers they are generally casual wage workers and next important one here is the report which also notes that at present about 47 percentage of zig work is in medium scaled jobs and about 22 percentage of this high skill and about 20 uh, 31 percentage of this low skilled jobs and trend which mainly shows that the concentration of the workers in this medium skills is gradually declining and that of low skill and high skill which is mainly increasing so especially report says that about 47 percentage of the zig workers they are mainly working in this medium skilled jobs and about 22 percentage they are highly skilled and about 31 percentage they have low skilled jobs okay and here this article says that it may be expected that while the domination of this medium skills would continue till 2030 so till 2030 in this zig economy yes there is increasing or domination of this medium skill workers and if you're talking about what are the recommendations are given by this report so first one is we need to come up on come up with this platform india initiative on the same lines how we came up with this startup india initiative so we need to focus on especially some pillars like simplification and holding and we need to focus on funding and next one is incentives skill development and as well as the social financial inclusion okay so these are some important recommendations we need to focus on simplification holding and we need to focus on supporting and providing some incentives and even skill development and as well as social financial inclusion so it has suggested that the self-employed individuals they engaged in that business of selling regional and as well as rural cuisine street work etc so here this article which mainly says that this report which mainly suggested that here who are the self-employed individuals they are mainly engaged in the business of selling some regional as well as rural, uh, rural cushions and as well as some food etc. They may be also linked to the platforms and next one is so there is a need of proper access to this institutional credit okay and that will be helpful for setting up of their own platforms 
and as soon as we can go for venture capital funding and as well as grants loans from the banks they can be taken especially for the fund uh, funding agencies they need to provide some platform to uh, businesses for this all size and pre revenue and early revenue stages so what happen whenever any company which is coming up especially startup they will go for venture capitaling so venture capitaling funding and as well as granting of loans from the banks so they are very very important especially for this uh, platform businesses and last important recommendation here is so we need to also include general gender sensitization gender sensitization and as well as accessibility awareness program for the workers and their families and we need to go for extending of the social security for the zik platform workers also so we need to focus on yes security social security will be given need to be given and to focus on sensitization accessibility and awareness programs as well so this is in detail regarding this topic and now let us try to see next topic title says pm invites g7 nations to invest in clean energy so as it is g7 it is seen highly in news so you can expect a question regarding this g7 in this means so please be prepared for this topic or going to write this year means so this topic is important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that access to energy should not be a privilege to the rich and to poor also should have equal right to energy so our prime minister he said in this g7 summit like so access to energy it should not be only the privilege for the rich but even poor they should have this equal right so here details mainly says that a special session on this g7 summit in germany here in this context our prime minister he mainly made a note on this clean energy on this clean energy sector and he said that india which mean emerged as a major domain and even developed economies they should invest in this arena so yes in india we are mainly focusing on clean energy so in the same way here developed economies they need to invest in this clean arena so here today when if you are talking about energy which is a very very highly costly because of this russia ukraine crisis so we are seeing there is increasing of prices of this crude oil and even many countries are facing this energy in security so india along with saudi uh, south africa and indonesia argentina senegal so they mainly participated in this g7 summit as a guest so we're talking about g7 so it is intergovernmental organization and actually this g7 which mainly formed in 1975 and later on extended to g8 okay russia which mainly added but russia it was removed so now again g7 so if you're talking about g7 it is intergovernmental organization and this organization which is mainly formed in year 1975 and this block which mainly meets annually and they will be discussing on issues of common interest for example global economic governance and international security and even energy policy so this g7 countries they are uk canada france germany italy japan and as plus well us okay all these g7 countries they are part of this g20 along with india so g7 plus india they are part of this g20 countries and g7 they does not have a formal constitution of fixed headquarters and what of the decisions are taking they are not binding as well so these are the complete list of this g7 countries we have us we have italy japan germany uk canada and france and now let's try to see next topic it is regarding world bank approves dollars 250 million loan to boost india's road safety so here we are mainly focusing on road safety so this article is important from our gs paper to under health point of view so if we're talking about context it mainly says that world bank recently approved dollar 250 million loan okay dollar 250 million loan and they are mainly going to support this government of india's road safety program they are going to support this government of india's road safety program for seven states under which single accident reporting number will be set up to better manage 
post crash events so what happened once accident is done so that uh, event that is called as after once accident is done so what are the steps you are taking that is called as post crash events so here this world bank which mainly approved dollar 250 million loan they are mainly focusing on road safety program of government of india especially in seven states and if you are talking about details it mainly says that so india state support program for this road safety and this program which mainly financed by world bank and it will be implemented in the states of andhra pradesh gujarat odisha tamil nadu telangana up and west bengal and in these seven states they are mainly going for implementation so here this dollar 250 million it is like a loan from international bird for reconstruction and development that is ibrd and the maturity here is 18 years and the grace period is 5.5 years so if talking about what is significance so this project will be helpful for establishing of a national harmonized crash database and that will be helpful to for analyzing of accidents so that we can consider better and as well as safer roads and next one is project will also provide incentives to states to leverage private funding through public private partnership concessions and as well as pilot initiatives so if you're talking about i want to give you one main question regarding this topic that is road safety should be dealt uh, with as a public health issue rather than transportation issue comment so try to write answer for this question should not be more than 150 words so next topic here regarding modi's two summits so this topic is very important from your international relations once again so if you see the introduction it mainly says that our prime minister he is attending two summits this week so first one here is 48th g7 summit and second one is bilateral summit with uae in abu dhabi so here if you're talking about the countries which are part of this g7 we have canada france germany italy Japan, UK and as well as United States. So if you are removing this US, so all these six countries like Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan and UK, they have, they have no close ties with this UAE. As you all know, India is one of the best and good trading partner and it is also having exports market and Indian diaspora, they are the base of remittances to India. So according to this official uh, FDI that is foreign direct investment data. So here it says that UAE which may invested more than more in India 2021 than compared to that of this Germany as well as France together. So whenever you are comparing with this investment of this January and France together. So here UAE which has a lot of amount of investments in India. So here unlike this UAE none of the G7 countries has yet signed this bilateral comprehensive economic partnership agreement with india so here if you're talking about areas of cooperation between india and uae so first one here is around 3 million indians they are living harmoniously in uae and those people they are working there they are involved in this economic engagement and even to de uh, deepen the security cooperation and even they mainly uh, found that there is a good cooperation between india and uae so if you're talking about UAE, it is very much important for India regarding this look east policy. And if you're talking about importance of UAE and India relations, yes, UAE which mainly occupies key place in India's West Asia policy. So in India's West Asia policy, your UAE which mainly occupies a key role. And even there is a high level visit from both the sides that has given a new impetus and even in 2017, we came up with this uh, Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement. And if you're talking about economic relations, yes, regarding trade and commerce, so we are mainly doing good. And trade and commerce, it is one of the backbone for this bilateral relationship between India and UAE. And UAE, which has one of its uh, leading sources of this uh, FDIs as well. And UAE is uh, India's third largest trade partner after Russia, after China and as well as US. And here UAE which mainly accounts about 8% of India's oil imports. And if you're talking about in areas like security and defense cooperation, yes, it is one of the significant pillar between India and UAE ties. So there is also growing cooperation in security and even defense sector which is mainly seen. 
and apart from that if you are talking about radicalism of Gulf and as a South, Af South Asia so India which is mainly focusing on improving its security cooperation and it is mainly focusing on countering of uh, terrorist threats and even combat radicalization as well. So if you are talking about air combat exercises we have Desert Eagle and if you are talking about concerns regarding India UAE relations. So as far as investments are concerned, slow implementation of Indian side is one of the major obstacles. So there is slow implementation from these investments in Indian side. And next one is bilateral trade had come down significantly in past years. So we need to focus on this trade. And next one here is, so here the number of workers who are coming from this Bangladesh, Philippines, you are replacing these Indian workers. So it is also one cause of concern. So what is the way forward? So we need to ensure the execution of the investment projects with required expertise. So we need to have some execution of these investment projects and we need to enhance bilateral trade including defense and as well as defense trade and as well as food, agricultural products, etc. and even automobiles. And we can also focus on medical tourism and we can also focus on renewable energy sector. And in this different sector, we need to focus on cooperation through just joint training programs. So this is about way forward. So here you can see map and once again, I want to show the globe such that you can understand where is the location of this UAE which is exactly located. So here, here I hope you can see now. So here you see India is there. Okay. So here India and here, here in this part you can see UAE. So we are talking about relationship between India here and UAE which is present here. Okay. So I will be also showing you map. So I think in globe you can't see very clearly. So this is the map here. So here you can see this is our UAE. And here you have to see the countries which are sharing boundary with UAE. Here we have Qatar, here we have Saudi Arabia, here we have Oman. So here you can see some water bodies like state uh, Shat Al Arab it is there here. And here we have water body that is Persian Gulf and here we have Gulf of Oman. So this Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman which is mainly connected through this Strait of Hormuz. And now let us try to say today's question the first one is regarding monotheistic movement. So consider the following statements regarding this monotheistic movement of medieval India. So first statement here is most of this monotheists belong to upper caste but not at all true. So they all mainly belong to low caste. So if you see, remove this first statement, the correct option is 3, 2 and 3 only. So here second statement here is, they got influenced in one way or other by varying degree by Vaishnava concept of Bhakti and Natpanti movement and Sufism, yes. And they criticized superstition of this uh, orthodox elements of Hinduism and as well as Islam, yes. And next question is regarding Shankaracharya. So Shankaracharya, he, advoca he advocated Advaita, yes. And he preached Upanishad doctrine for salvation through knowledge. Yes. So correct option is 3, both 1 and 2. And today's question, so the first one here is regarding Bhakti movement. And second question is regarding Vijayanagara Empire. So try to read the statements and give me the correct options regarding these questions in the comment box. And now I want to make a small announcement. So we in Rathors as we came up with this foundation course for 2023 and 2024. So this course is very very beneficial for the beginners and even who gave attempts in their UPSC if they don't have the conceptual clarity. So this course is absolutely beneficial because we are mainly providing video classes on each and every topic and we are mainly providing examples and even we discussed previous prelims and as well as means question that course and we came with 100% coverage of syllabus and as well as those classes were taken by expert faculty. So I think yesterday evening there was one lecture regarding ethics which had been posted in YouTube. So please try to watch that lecture so that you can understand how deeply the concepts are discussed. And apart from that, if you want to take individual courses like only ethics, only geography, only economy, history like that, you can take individual courses also. So for that, you can visit our website rathorsicacademy.com. There you can click on a course list after once your registration is done. And you can see the wide range of courses that will be appear on the screen. And if you want to watch the videos, you can cl click on the play course. And if you want to directly purchase the course, you can click on buy course. So in this way here, that will be helpful for your enrollment. And even we are, came, we are come up with this uh, 
mains answer writing practice course of july batch which is going to start on 3rd july so this course is absolutely beneficial because we are giving weekly targets so based on that weekly target we are giving you one daily question so there will be evaluation of your answer and we give you model answer and one more thing here is there will be one to one mentorship okay so these are some important courses that we are offering in our rathors is so i personally take geography and as well as uh, ethics in this rathors is academy so if you have any queries so please call me on this number 8074765513 Okay, so this is also WhatsApp number and you can text me on WhatsApp if you have any query. So now, let us try to see today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our today's Hindu. Date here is June 28th and this is Delhi edition. So first topic it is regarding Mir's quick trail came ahead of US-Pakistan meet. So as you all know, Pakistan which is mainly, okay, which is mainly present in this FATF blacklist and actually recently this plenary committee meeting which mainly held regarding this FATF right and it took some major decision regarding this Pakistan's Pakistan listing in grey list or to remove this grey list and actually here this Sajid Mir who mainly participated and he was one of the important person who planned for this 26 by liver attacks okay so here what happened so the deputy chief of international operations of uh, this led that is Lakshmi Thaiba deputy chief so he is Lakshmi Thaiba deputy chief and he organized this 26 by 11 Mumbai terror attacks and he mainly wanted for involvement in the terror recruitment and even financing cases in France, Australia, Denmark and as well as US. So he only declared as dead by Pakistan officials in December 2021 but arrested in April 2022. Okay, so this is about this topic and if you move forward here regarding this India's dig force, I already discussed this topic and I already discussed about this topic regarding PM invites G7 nations to invest in clean energy and if you move forward here you can see Talak e Hassan. So here you might have uh, come across this Talak e Bidr, Talak, uh, Triple Talak etc. So this Talak e Hassan it is also uh, one of the uh, I can say like divorce related uh, word. So here in this talaq e hasan so here talaq, 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 the three times of talaq will be not said at a one go, but uh, here this uh, talaq will be said once in every three month, uh, one month, okay. So that means for the three times, they will be saying this talaq for three, term, three times. And if you move forward, you can directly move on to this editorial page. And here you can see states, freebies and the cost of physical profligacy. So you need to know about this freebies. So actually whenever there is elections, yes, the leaders who are going to contest, so they will be coming up with this freebies and they say that they will be going to provide bikes, laptops, mixies, etc. So they all mainly comes under this freebies and you have to know about what is the impact of this freebies on the physical policy. And next topic is regarding Israel politics. Actually, it is not much important. And if you move forward here, you can see Modi's two summits. I discussed this topic. And here there is one article regarding higher education. There are a number of times we discussed this type of articles. And if you move on to text and context, this is about Sajid Mir's conviction. And next topic, it is about sterilite copper plant. I already discussed this topic in great detail, I think four days ago. And next topic, it is uh, mainly regarding this uh, Regarding this uh, seeker in Rajasthan tops uh, school grading index at district level. So this article which is mainly talking about school grading index. So recently here Rajasthan seeker it is a top performance which is mainly followed by this John Hunu and Jaipur in the union government's index that is performance of a school education system at the district level. So here the categories are regarding outcomes, effective classroom transac transaction infrastructure facilities, students entitlements, uh, say school safety, uh, children protection as well as digital learning governance process. So these are some important areas they focus. And next one is India European Union resume this FTA negotiations. So we have to see once that is done. And next one is India Malaysia discuss uh, defense ties. So this article is also very important from our bilateral relations. And next one is the World Bank approves 250 million dollars loan to boost India's road safety, I discussed this topic. And next one is center may raise the small saving ratings. So this topic is important from your GS paper 3. And this uh, 
small saving rates that is going to be discussed by the servant sir in economic weekly don't worry about that and this one is gst panel may discuss states compensation e-commerce norms so these are some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper so i hope you enjoyed this lecture so please subscribe to our science academy and don't forget to like share and comment my videos and don't forget to enroll to the courses that we are offering and if you have any doubts so please contact us on the number which is given on the screen so by this i'm concluding thank you so much